Hey everybody, I'm just about to interview Marty McGuire of the Dixie Chicks. She chose our violins for the entire tour this summer. So it's really, really awesome and special. And you're gonna be able to watch the interview any moment. She loves our instrument. She was looking for a special instrument to give that rich acoustic sound, but they needed to have it painted white. And you know what that does to the sound. So with our special unique pickup, the sound is awesome. She loves it and you're about to hear the interview. Check it out. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really think it's a great opportunity for us to talk about string playing. And a lot of the things that I've watched uh, with your work that I found to be so interesting about your violin playing, your voice, your music are all sort of synergized into one. And I would love to start from the beginning. Well, my mother being a teacher, um, she just had it in her mind that she wanted all three girls to start classically trained, um, the Suzuki method. And we all started violin and piano at five. So we all started classically. Um, my oldest sister, Julia, she really took to the piano and that was her love for a while. And um, I rebelled against the violin as I got older, but at 12, I discovered country music. So um, that was the age where I felt like I could branch out and do the music I was listening to on the radio and my dad's record collection. And, and I felt like that was true rebellion, you know, how guitar players start playing rock music and they drive their parents crazy. I wasn't really driving my parents crazy because my parents loved country music. So my dad was more than happy to drive me an hour outside of Dallas once a week to Johnny Thorne in Garland, Texas to take my fiddle lessons. I had the records, all the Suzuki records, and I wasn't great at reading music, but somehow I got by in orchestra and my lessons by having music on record. It's early on I realized, okay, I'm probably going to be more of an ear player. Um, I would put on the records and kind of learn the tunes and they were catchy. And that kept me going and kept me interesting, interested. What I'm interested in is that moment at 12 where you, what did you hear other than, was there, was there any string or fiddling that you heard that you said, wow, I want to play that kind of music because you heard a violin or did you say, well, I play violin, I can transfer to the fiddle easily? I heard fiddle on country records. My dad was a big Bob Wills fan, so we had those records. Um, my parents bought an RV when I was 12, and we went to bluegrass festivals and heard live music. And I remember my dad sneaking us into the saloon, which was a bar on Greenville Avenue in Dallas when we were really little, and getting to hear Bill Monroe play. Um, just, I don't know what he said to the club owner, but he let us, you know, get to hear him. Um, so we were the only kids in a lot of bars where my dad wanted us to get exposed to music. I think my parents just had that conversation that they really wanted us to have music. It's an honor that we are uh, providing you with an instrument that we build in America just for you. We want to get your experience with these instruments and uh, uh, find out what you've liked about them. Yeah, I was really excited that you offered to um, help me on the tour and provide so many beautiful instruments. Um, I was worried, I have to say, because I had never played your instruments and every electrified fiddle I've ever played um, has not sounded anything close to an acoustic instrument. And I've spent my career collecting and finding the most vintage, amazing sounding instruments. Spent a lot of money, <laughs> you know, collecting these instruments. And when the um, designer for the tour said he wanted all the instruments white, I just about had a heart attack because I thought, how, you know, I've just spent years and years gathering these instruments and they're all so personal to me and it's this sound that I really like. We've been through every pickup system. So we've had, we've had a microphone on it with the pickup. We, so we split both of those, you know, but the problem with live is the feedback. So we can't, you know, you can't even get really enough of the mic in there to make a tonal difference. So you have to then depend on the bridge. And then when we got this, it's a, I think it's a, a, like a, a little mellower, rounder sound, which I like. 
So the fact that it, it is painted and it has this authentic fiddle sound, I thought was amazing. So how do you do that? Well, thank you. Actually, I can show you real fast because we were talking earlier about that when I saw you. The secret is right here. You're going to give your secret away? <laughs> <laughs> right here, if you can see the bridge traditionally has this on it. On this side, it's connected. Mm -hmm. So we placed in a specific area a transducer because when you put a transducer in the body, it becomes a big problem. Mm -hmm. So with the transducer on the bridge, it is activating about 95% of the quality of your playing as opposed to it being absorbed by the body. Mm -hmm. With the painted body, we pretty much destroy the acoustical properties of the instrument. And that's the, 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 the trade-off, because it looks gorgeous, it looks awesome with you playing it, but if it doesn't sound good, we throw it in the garbage. Mm -hmm. Luckily, because of this pickup that we designed, um, it really changed everything about our sound. And with the, um, the pickup out, I think you put into some effects, but not much. The raw sound of these instruments are spectacular. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you, they are unplugged. great. It had volume, it had openness, it you know, had tone, it had everything like when I pick up my instrument. And then I had my tech play it for me and compare it to my violins. And I felt like it was very similar. The um, creative hobbies to help you get inspired, focus, anything that you're doing non-musically in the last couple of years that you found to find another voice. Uh, and being a mom certainly is probably one of them. Yeah, I, I think yoga's helped my um, fiddle playing. Do y'all do yoga? Oh, every day. I really feel like yeah. it's helped me. I had the startings of Carpal Tunnel on the last tour years ago, and um, somebody told me, try yoga and try stretching. And, and I thought, gosh, I'm not going to be able to support my body weight and do all these crazy things with my wrists and my fingers. And I was really nervous about it, but I feel like it's improved my physical the, health for playing. Right, the more in touch we are with our bodies. Mm -hmm. And the neck and just oh. everything, well, yeah. I've got a feeling that your music is in such a great place right now, but your life is bigger. Yeah. You know, and the last 10 years, where if you see your violin in 20 years, God, we hope, let's hope we all play, you know, when we're our 80s and 90s, but do you feel that your violin playing may evolve or it may be just where it is perfectly now? I know, yeah. I mean, you have to work, you have to push through the next stage, right? I mean, you really do, and that takes time and effort and ingenuity. So I, let's see if my kids reach a point to where they're kind of flying on their own and I can have some more time, because at some point they're going to be you know, little teenagers and not wanting as much to do with me. So um, I do look forward to that time to get kind of back in the studio. I have a studio in my house and I'm always um, down there trying to, you know, write songs and not necessarily just for fiddle. Um, you know, I'm usually writing vocal songs, but I'm always trying to incorporate fiddle whenever I can. But, you know, it's gone from a love-hate relationship when I didn't really want to be doing it and you know that beginning scratchy sound getting over that hump and then really loving it and owning it with wanting to play the bluegrass and the country music and now I feel like it's like an old friend you know it's something that I'm really sentimental about when I look at my life as a whole and it kind of defines who I am in a lot of people's eyes as far as like my family you know that's kind of who I've become whatever you do the longest <laughs> becomes who you become and so I feel a lot of passion for it even though you're right in the last 10 years I've focused more on my children and you know they've started a band and they're playing some violin but mainly drums and piano and guitars and I almost feel like now my role is to inspire them, support them, be there for them, almost kind of pass the baton in a way and make sure they still do their lessons and do, you know, not be too much of a stage mom.